Jenny at a stronger rate. And to finalize everything that I'm saying here, with 60K defense, your total life would be 9,507, uh, 9, which means this is the total amount of damage that the game will literally allow for you to take. So your defense rating is going to be affecting this number, which means if you're getting hit by an attack that would have naturally done 200 damage and you're getting a 58, 52, whatever it may be, percentage reduction, you're making a 200 damage attack, now do 83. How many times does 83 fit into this number? 114 times. This is your total life and this is your 40k defense. As we can see here, and this is one thing that right you said, you're going to get diminishing returns the more you invest into 60k. As you can see, this is less tanky than this. How many 95s? Because it was supposed to do 200, now it's going to do 95. How many 95s can fit into this total number? 121. And then we're looking at the 6k defense and looking at total life now being this number. How many times does 150 fit into this number? 146 times. So this number is larger than these two numbers because you have more life to play with. Total life is strong and people are acting like you running low numbers means that you don't get any sort of damage reduction, but you do. And it's less of an investment. Looking in here, as you can see here, this is what I said the most optimal defense was, right? In my video, I said you would technically want to run max shields, max HP, um, max HP, uh, max HP defense, and then max shield, max shield, or max HP, max shield. And again, we're running about this, right? Now, technically speaking, if you wanted to invest more into max shields, again, if you have a shield recovery character or something like that, then I would really recommend it. And I said that for the case of Enzo, the first one minute of the video, uh, I basically said that you need to look at your character skills because you have a skill that makes something stronger than you might want to actually invest into it, right? So in this case here, you would never want to invest into defense because if you already have perks that actually give you more defense whenever you proc it, then there's actually just genuinely no need to run that because you're going to get diminishing returns. With no investment whatsoever except us running the perk uh, component here that's basically 4900, we're giving ourselves basically 6k defense, which allows for us to take 25% damage reduction. Right now, keep in mind again, both of these numbers here can all, all of this number can be lowered the most you invest into defense because the more defense that you invest, the more diminishing returns you get. And the more that you invest into it, whenever a boss takes away that defense, the more that these numbers now jump to instead of it, let's say you're doing now 83, now you might take 95. Now, this one you might take 115. This one you might take an extra, uh, two, you might take 200, right. So if it's lowering your defense, right? Well, let's say you might take 195. So you might go from here to 95. From this one, you might go to 115. For this one, you might go to 180. Well, this is still an overall larger number if your defense is being lowered because you're selling out to that stat, right? So I want you to keep this in mind, right? So what have we been able to learn here today? Class <laughs> of naturally, if the attack would naturally do 200, it's now going to do 95. You're giving yourself 121 hints of that with 60k defense investment, and then now your overall total life being lowered because you're running no shields. You're looking at this now being a percentage here, your total life here. You're not able to take 114 damage from an attack that was going to do 200, now doing 83. As you can see here, look at the jump in the numbers. You go we went from 83 to 95. That 60k defense didn't really do that much. It's kind of like elemental resistance. It's another thing that he talked about in this video. So as you can see here, you get diminishing returns. Uh, the less amount of defense that you invest into, you can see that you really get a huge return because you're able to invest more into life. Look at these, these numbers compared to this number. With no real change except, again, you can control the base values of max HP and max shields, which allow for you to get an even larger return. And there's actually a way in the game, if I were to actually have a god roll, where I can actually make this overall number even higher with this. So this could even get even stronger. On top of the simple fact that if you pick up an orb, right, you went from being able to take 114 with this sort of, to now taking 130. If you pick up an orb with this one, you went been able to take 121 to taking 139. With this one, you were able to go from 146 to now taking 165. On top, that's just if you're just from picking up an orb. Shield recovery, you can't do it with either of these because people telling you don't run shield shields is trash. You're completely missing out on a built-in mechanic in the game if you're running again shield recovery modifier and shield recovery out of combat, shield recovery in combat. All of these things make it to where now you can gain plus nine. Uh, basically 15 times a second and then whenever you get to uh, 
the five second mark you're going to be able to do plus 21 now 15 times a second which again is going to be able to net you and I actually slowed this down to a, sep a possible frame where I went from literally one second to the two second mark and I, I calculated exactly what that number was to the next number and this is what you're getting you're getting 15 times of that nine in that second and that's basically that number there so you're getting 15 of that nine in that which gave us that number of 135 uh, uh, and then we added that uh, together and we're able to get ourselves that number here so in five seconds of no damage basically we're able to give ourselves uh 270 defense i mean 270 life back and that is exclusive for this because you're actually running shields where this would make sense uh if you're running um basically if you do two seconds of this then you're giving yourself again 630 life for two seconds for every three seconds you're out of combat for every seven seconds of out of you being out of combat and you're not taking any damage you're giving yourself 900 shields back this is really important whenever you're immobilizing a boss this is also really important whenever you're actually waiting for a mechanic the boss is spawning back in let's say he teleports you in your executioner and you go down you don't take any damage this is all going to happen passively so these two are much more variable results in your favor because this can happen a lot and this can happen a lot and just you picking up an orb boosts this. And you can do both of these at the same time, unlike with max HP, where if you're running only uh, health and you're running no shields, then the shield recovery does not matter to you at all because the number is too low and you don't invest into the shield recovery modifier and all of these other things, which means you're just going to have no actual end result from that. But with this one, you're able to give yourself two uh, better recoveries that you wouldn't be able to get the exact same power from with the exact same investment as the 60K or the 40K. So, hopefully you guys understand exactly what's going on. Hopefully you guys are able to make sense of all of what I'm saying here. Izuko, man. I'm just trying to show you guys the most optimal way to run defense. If you don't believe it, I don't know what else to tell you anymore. I gave you the mat side Raichu. If you guys watch Raichu, please hit him up in his comment section or his Discord or whatever. Tell him to react to this or tell him to make his own video on this and see the, the truth of it all. Um, and basically go from that. For the least amount of investment... The most optimal sort of uh, defensive style, the most optimal defense, you do not want to invest into defense. I stand on that, and I will stand on that. And not only just from the mat side of things, which I already did, but also just for the simple fact of you can feel the difference in game. I don't understand how people can see the visual test in the first video, the second video, and the third video, and see the difference that defense does not matter. It really doesn't. All you need is around 6K, technically speaking, if you can get a build here with no investment, for example, oh, as you can see here, his natural defense is 3953, which means that's a lot of defense. We're running nothing on defense, and we're able to give ourselves naturally here uh, basically almost 4,000, which means he just straight up come out of the box <laughs> with straight up 20% damage reduction. So when you add that other 4,000, now you pass this 8, well, now, which means you're now at... 30% damage reduction. So, again, the more defense that a character naturally has, the stronger that this becomes because you're, again, making it to where you give yourself the least amount of investment. So, now with him... Cool. This one. So, again, you can run shield recovery out of combat, shield recovery in combat, defense. You can run shield recovery modifier here on top of a max shield, and then this, the actual main stat being... So, max HP, max shield, shield recovery modifier. Max HP, defense, shield recovery in combat. Max HP, shield recovery out of combat then uh max hp or max hp or you can do max shield max hp i would recommend doing that because again you kind of want to give yourself that sort of reward there so now as you can see just from us running that we're able to give ourselves 8,000 defense now naturally which means instead of us doing the little 25 here so this attack now uh, doing 200 percent damage down to this now we can say hey what's well, going to be 30 percent <laughs> of this 200 uh attack now right and now that's 60 so now you can bring this number here all the way down to 140 so now again the more natural defense that the, your actual character has the stronger that they are going to be because you don't need to increase this number by a lot so just for you running a lepic you're actually much more tanky because now you just straight up get to get more now hopefully you've been able to conclude here the same results that I've been able to find, not only through the mat, but through the visual testing that I feel like is just self-evident. If you don't want to believe, then you don't want to believe. And there are many people in the comment section, you can go watch it, who are saying that 
they're able to immediately see a difference in them just running no defense and everything built into building around that max actual stat, the base value that we can increase by a percentage. So for example, let's say we run this exact same set here. We're actually gonna keep that on here. And let's say we go ahead and go to a character like Eugen, for example, who has naturally 1400 base HP. Look at this number. This is now a really, really high number, right? And this is now 3000. So again, just overall bigger boost, right? So let's say we went ahead and we said, oh, forget this. Well, we technically would want to run that. We're going to lose this one here to run this bad boy. And let's just say we had a shield recovery modifier. Now you're at 22, uh, again, uh, 1,000 max HP just because this character has an overall large number. And I want you guys to go back to the first video, Cracking the Code in Defense, where I, I literally in the first minute said you need to take everything off and look at the base stat, which means you go into your character, you take everything off, and you look at that number, right? The larger that number is, that's the one you want to invest into because it's going to give you the most return. You do not want to do that with defense because you just want to only use just a little actual legendary defensive perk. The higher you can get this defensive legendary, the better off you're going to be. You technically will want the uh, legendary version because it's going to allow for you to get to that 6K or that 8K where you're going to get the most bang for your buck, right? But the most important thing is if you have a max HP that is a really, really high stat, go for it. If you have a shield character, for example, Enzo, with a very nice max shield stat, uh, naturally, go for it. But always you would want to invest into your max HP. So what have we been able to prove in this video? It would prove that 6K defense is trash. You're able to prove that 40K defense is actually really decent for what you're able to get. But you would actually need to invest more into your shields and you would need to invest more into your overall life uh, health, which means more modules being used in order for you to get the exact same result, which means you would have to invest more into this in order to make this as strong as everyone wants. I'm telling you, it's not optimal. That's the whole point that I was trying to make because as you can see here, with just 6K defense and total life being overall literally dang near twice both of these, you're able to make yourself able to take literally so much more hits of than both of these. And then as you pick up orbs, which makes a bigger difference because you're giving your, you're picking up a higher percentage from a higher base number, you're able to take much more hits than these two. Literally, these are like really sm small, right? This is 130 and you jump to 139. This one jumped from a huge, huge, right, percentage. So again, as you're actually playing the game, this becomes even stronger. And as you're actually playing the game with shields, this becomes even more strong. So that's everything I have for you, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, bro. It's Zuko. Hopefully you enjoyed the mat. We a nerd out here. Peace.